Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Pray God's blessings on us as we worship together this morning. Mary uh, Schutte wanted me to share an announcement. So after the service today, if you are a lector or if you want to be a lector, uh, she'd like to meet just in the back, back here after the service to schedule for July and August readers. And so that'll just be right after the service. Ingrid, I don't know if you heard that. Mary wants to have a meeting and schedule lectures after church today, so just so you know. Um, today's gospel reading, so we have a wonderful picture. Uh, it's about the parable of the mustard seed, and so we look forward to that. Actually, there's two parables about seeds in today's gospel reading. We have several women on a retreat this uh, weekend. They're coming home about noon today, so we pray for safe travel for them, and if some of us guys, like Chris, for example, are looking a little starved and, and like we haven't eaten in a few days, that is why. <laughs> On uh, Wednesday, we have a blood drive. Um, that'll be Wednesday from Jennifer, 3.30 to 6. So if you'd like to sign up to see Jennifer after the service today. And also on Wednesday, we're starting our summer twice a month. We're having food trucks, so you can read more about it, about who will be here. But there'll be two food trucks. There'll be live music from 6 to 8 here at the church. And so you can come give blood, get a nice hearty meal, and uh, listen to some good music. So plan on joining us for that. So I 
think that's what I want to highlight for us. Um, let's turn our focus now to our, our worship together, and Harry will help us to center ourselves in the video. <laughs> you to stand as we begin with our call to worship, inspired by our psalm today, Psalm 92. And so you have the bold response of each, each section. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into the Lord's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. It is good to give thanks, O God, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night, to the music of the lute and harp, to the melody of the lyre. For you, O God, have made us glad by your work. At the works of your hands we sing for joy. Let us pray. God of our salvation, we sing from the depths of our sorrow, we sing from the abundance of our joy, we sing in voices separate and unique, we sing with one voice as your body. May the words of our mouths, whether in speech or song, and the meditations of our hearts, whether silent or shared, be pleasing in your sight. Amen. We join our voices in song. Thank you. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. Please be seated. The prayer of the day. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Grass, graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and be and love to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The psalm lesson is from Psalm 92. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. To the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp, for you make me glad by your deeds, Lord, and I sing for joy at what your hands have done. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God, they will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. The first lesson is from the book of Ezekiel, beginning at chapter 17. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I myself will take a shoot from the very top of a cedar and plant it. I will break off a tender sprig from its topmost shoots and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It will produce branches and bear fruit and become a splendid cedar. Birds of every kind will nest in it. They will find shelter in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the forest will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree and make the low tree grow tall. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, and I will do it. Word of God, word of life.
invite you to stand for the gospel. Our gospel reading today is from the fourth chapter of the gospel of Mark, beginning at verse 26. This is what the kingdom of God is like, Jesus said. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it, because the harvest has come. Again he said, What shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many other parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they could understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was done with his... But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Come on. Really, come on. What? Hi, how are you doing? Good. Awesome. Okay. So, okay, you guys, you took my spot. Oh, good. What's up with this? Come on up. Okay, so I'll just stay here. Is that okay? And hopefully I'll be off camera. Right, Bob? No? Okay. Well, anyway, how are you guys doing? All right, so first of all, I want to pre-warn you. I usually have candy, which doesn't make your parents happy. Today I have no candy. I know, it's a sad thing, but I have something better, and you'll see, okay? What? It's a, you, you're awesome. All right, so I want to start out by showing you some seeds, okay? So here's one seed. You guys all see it? Oh, my. You know, he does this in Sunday school, too. I mean, right at the beginning. You're right. This is the mustard seed. All right, this right here is a seed for a bell pepper. You guys know what a bell pepper is? Yes. You do? Oh, so I don't need to pull it out? Okay, well, so it's a bell pepper, and the bell pepper, Vincent, can you stand up for me? All right, so about how tall are you? Well, you're four feet something, right? I was going to bring a yardstick, but I forgot. So, so, um, the bell pepper, the what I looked up online, they can get anywhere from three to six feet. So either one or you stacking on top of each other. So apparently they can get big, okay? And they can get like two feet across, all right? So next seed we have is a Roma tomato. Do you know what those? Those are the tomatoes like that? Right. And they get about three feet high, supposedly, okay? The plant itself. But the, uh, the mustard seed, which uh, it does get the biggest. You're exactly right. It looks like this. Uh-oh, I forgot that, too. This has not been good. Oh, here we go. OK, it doesn't look very big, all right? But it does. It gets very big. And I saw different things online, not that you can believe everything online. But they can get anywhere from three to, I guess, like 15 feet tall, which is very, very tall, taller than any basketball player. And what's even better is they get really, really wide, these plants, OK? So who likes mustard? I do, too. All right, what do you use mustard for? Well, the kind of mustard, just regular yellow mustard. What do you put it on? Sandwiches? What about hot dogs? Do we put mustard on our hot dogs? Do we put ketchup on our hot dogs? Okay, well, I'm not here to judge, so. But 
I guess Steve Lassard puts ketchup on his hot dogs, so I guess it's okay. So anyway, today we are going to talk about the parable of the mustard seed. And Pastor just read that. I just want to read a small portion of it. And this is the Bible. It's not the action Bible that most of you have. This is the... You finished the action? Awesome. That is awesome. All right. So it says, this is uh, Mark 4. It says, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? What's a parable? Do you know? A, a straight line? Well, it could be a straight line. What? Okay. It's, this is not a math problem, okay? Not math. That's okay. Vincent, what's a parable? Whoa. It's a story. And Jesus used stories, just like your teachers use stories in school, to explain things to you. Because it makes it more meaningful. Okay? So... Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest seed you plant in the ground. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest branches that the birds of the air can perch in its shade. So what does that mean? Awesome job. Awesome. Well put. You said when you have faith, when you start out with a faith of a mustard seed, very small, it can grow, basically, right? So um, when Jesus was around, there were, there were more than 12, there was 12 disciples, but, and other people believed too, but when Christianity started, it was just like with 12 disciples. And about the time, if you can believe Wikipedia, about the time Jesus was alive, there was 300 million people in the world. And you're thinking, whoa, what number is that, right? That's a lot of people. Do you? It's a lot of people, all right? Well, now there are about, let's see, I have it, 7.8 billion people in the world. That's a really big number. I saw her face light up. She's thinking, whoa, if I had that much money. <laughs> so anyway, so how did... How did we get from 12 disciples, and then there's 7.8 billion people, and again, Wikipedia says, there's about 2 point, where is it, 2 point, 2 billion Christians. 2 billion. How do we get from 12 million to 2 billion? How does that work? There's no, no um, Instagram back then or Facebook, huh? Right, there his disciples spread the word, exactly. And how did they do that? I think, I think Jesus plants <coughs> seeds in our hearts, all right? Not the kind of seeds that have branches and stuff that would get yet really yucky, but the kind of seeds that, that help us to become Christians like Jesus wants us to be, right? Right? So what do plants need to grow? Sunlight and water. Sunlight, air, and water, right? Right? What? what? Exactly. You're right. So what do we need? And, yes. And what do we need? What do we need to grow? The seed, the faith seeds in our heart. What? Yeah, okay. What else? Exactly, exactly. You know, every day people do, hopefully people do kind things to us. That's God. That's God. When people do kind things, that's like God growing our faith. Because what should we do when people do kind things for us? Yes. You do kind things for other people, right? Exactly. We need to learn to be kinder. All of us. I think you guys are. You're probably well on your way, right? We need to keep doing that. We need to love others and be kind. All right. One more thing. There's something that can stop plants from growing. You guys know what that is? 
Starts with a W. That's Elijah? No. Well, weather could do it too, especially around here. Chemical, you're right. Not water, huh? Weeds, exactly, weeds. And weeds can do the same thing to us as Christians. If we hang around people that are always negative all the time and putting people down, not a good thing. Not a good thing. We need to be kind to others, okay? It, there's all sorts of different people in the world, and we need to be kind to them. All right, so guess what I have for you after the prayer? Mustard seeds. Oh, boy. Contain your excitement. No? Okay. Well, you can throw them away or keep them. Or you, or you can plant it. I think that would be cool to see if they really grow. All right. So let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, help us take care of the seeds you planted in our hearts. Help us to be kind and spread your sunshine wherever we can. Amen. All right. So if you don't want a seed, that's okay. It won't hurt my feelings. What if you just, what? Okay, you guys, you guys are, okay, here's the thing. Apparently, you, that's how you make mustard, is crushing the seeds or something. Don't do that with this, okay? Well, there's not enough anyway. There's barely enough mustard for an ant, okay? There, there you go. Okay, there you go. There, there. Well, I don't know. Talk to your parents. I didn't do that much research. Okay. Okay, you guys, we got a pastor. We don't want him to talk any longer then. Okay. Okay, goodbye. Bye, you guys. Love you. Come on. Here we go. Hey, there you go. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. And Sandy, too. Okay. There you go. Plant it, okay? Don't feed it to the chickens. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, kids. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So obviously one of our parables today, it's Sandy did such a good job developing is the parable of the mustard seed and the fact that it when planted it starts out so tiny and then grows so large and and I guess I would suggest that this parable is the kingdom of God and I think uh, Sandy alluded to that uh, with our faith but the kingdom of God starts out so tiny and then grows so huge and I have an example as well, the trees in our backyard, which are now probably 100 to 150 feet tall. And the previous owners, a few years ago after we first moved in, they sent us a picture of what the backyard used to look like. Um, trees were much smaller, obviously, and there was so much sunlight and, and lots more plants. Um, now the trees are so huge and it's hard to get anything to grow underneath those trees and I'm constantly picking up those very same pine cones and three of our neighbors behind us actually want us to cut the trees down and are, have been pestering us about that. One up on the hill, um, <clears throat> we're blocking his view of the mountain with our trees. The guy right behind us is tired of picking up branches if the wind blows just the right way. And then the, another neighbor behind us, he's worried about a tree falling over onto his daughter's bedroom. So they want us to cut them down. In addition, I, uh, for the first time in several years, planted some vegetables, kind of like Sandy did. So I have radishes and carrots, green onions, and lettuce. I've already eaten the first batch of radishes, and yesterday, for my BLT sandwich, I cut some lettuce, so it was wonderful. We are, and I have tomatoes again this year as well, so I, when I bought them from Bassey Nurseries, they were like 12 inches tall, and now they're four times that size. Sandy, you started from seeds. How are your tomato plants doing? <laughs> so they have a ways to go before you get any fruit. 
And that's our other parable. That's the second one uh, where Jesus says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day, whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the seed produces grain. So these two parables, the uh, mustard seed and, and this other parable, they are a picture of what the kingdom of God is like that it starts so small and insignificant, even unnoticed. And I think the humble beginnings we get in the beginning of Mark, where, where Mark says that John the Baptist, the, the messenger, the forerunner of Jesus, is thrown in prison. Humble beginnings. And then after that, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. And Jesus said, this, the time has come, the kingdom of God has come near. And then later on, as Jesus is talking about his impending death, he says, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And isn't that <clears throat> an impossible and, and such a small, insignificant, unexpected, even upside down way for a kingdom to get started? Death on a cross. But from defeat comes victory. From death comes life, life, and the kingdom of God grows. And somehow, though we don't know how, it grows throughout the world. And the promise is that it will grow and encompass all of creation. And this applies to us as well as individuals, where the Apostle Paul says, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. He's talking here about the resurrection and what kind of body we will have, but I think it also applies to this new way of life that we can live here and now. Paul also talks about the death of our old ways, our old ways of living, and that we are given birth into a new way to live. And the kingdom of God grows in us and among us. And so this is both promise and invitation. These two parables make clear that God's kingdom will not be denied. Like roots winning the battle against cement sidewalks and asphalt. Can you see that? That's kind of an extreme example. Mike has placed a wager that this is in New Orleans. I guess the sidewalks are all like that there. And more in our area, I remember my mom years ago lamenting over paving the rich and fertile soil in the valleys, particularly South Center and all the warehouses that are now in Kent Valley. And she just thought that was criminal to do all of that in the name of commerce. So think about all the cement, and we're still doing the same today as we're, we're uh, Sumner and now Puyallup, we're trying to get in on the action and make more and more warehouses. Think about the, all that cement as our society of 24-7 multitasking in order to achieve and accomplish and perform and possess, that we are required by our society to want more, to have more, to use more, to eat and drink more. And so our society creates in us a restlessness that makes us anxious and worried. We're never satisfied, we're never content, we're always wanting and needing more. Think of this in terms of the Israelites when they were enslaved in Egypt. And compare that with our society. How Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, demanded more and more bricks from the Israelites. And so that demand produced in them, the ones having to produce the bricks, a restless anxiety trying to meet that demand. And then think about how after God brings the people out of slavery in Egypt and they're in the wilderness with God and they're journeying to the promised land, and God provides enough food for today, inviting the people to trust and not to worry about tomorrow. I don't know if I've ever made that connection with our Lord's Prayer that we pray every week. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us what we need today, and we will trust about tomorrow. So it's the difference between striving to gain life based on what we can accomplish and achieve and possess versus receiving life as a gift. It's restless versus restful. It's anxiety versus trust. Compare later in Mark's gospel two people that encounter Jesus as you think about this. First is a, 
a young man that comes to Jesus and he asks Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus responds to keep the commandments. And the man says, I have kept all of them since I was a boy. And then Jesus says to him, one thing you lack, sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and then come and follow me. And as he's told this, the man's face fell, Mark says, and he went away sad because he had great wealth. And so Jesus says to his disciples how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. So think about that encounter and compare it to a little bit later in Mark where one of the teachers of the law in conversation with Jesus and Jesus' response, he confirms what Jesus said, that it, the most important law is to love God with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and also to love your neighbor as yourself. That these two are more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices, than all of our restless, anxious piety. Jesus said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. So God's kingdom has come near in Jesus, and it will not be thwarted. This is both promise and invitation. Life finds a way. The invitation is to trust in the life that Jesus gives us, to trust in God's providing all that we need, and to live in such a way that reflects our trust, restful and content and grateful. Amen. I'd like you to stand as we sing together. continue with our prayers. Let us pray. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in people of all nations throughout the world. By your spirit, enliven your church so that the good news of your kingdom of grace 
will continue to take root and grow. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, we know that when we become disconnected from you, our lives become parched and unfruitful, and our faith becomes stunted and dry. Bless and renew our lives, we pray, so that we remain connected to you at all times and in all places, strengthening our faith to expand and growing strongly and vigorously to bear the fruit of your mercy, love, and your undying life. Father, how can we ever understand the miracle of your ways? We see your creation and we know you are God. Yet we saw your mighty kingdom formed with the humility of a servant. Faith and acts of kindness grow into great good. We will never comprehend how your kingdom comes, but we recognize its fruit. We see it in unexpected places, in sickness, in poverty, in conflict. We see it in the places we wouldn't want to live. Sometimes we see it in our own lives. Your kingdom come, Lord, in us and in your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountains, bring forth new growth. Restore parched lands that are suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for your kingdom to come and your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so we continue to pray for justice among the nations and for our leaders and those in power. Lead and guide them to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And healing God, comfort your people, give compassion to those in need, and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer. And we pray today especially for Grandma Dot, for Steve Olson, for Randy Olson and his family at the death of his wife Jan, for Doug and Debbie and Mike and Katie. We pray as well for safe travel for those returning from a retreat this weekend. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need in these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. And as we turn our, our attention to this table and this meal that God provides for us, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Fulfilling the promise of the resurrection, you pour out the fire of your spirit, uniting in one body people of every nation and tongue. And so with the whole church, we join our voices together to praise your name. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set this table and provided this meal. There is a place for you, and so you are invited to come and to be fed with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You may be seated. You're invited to come up the center aisle, and there's wafers available on the table and in trays. And then from there, proceed to the, the trays with 
grape juice on the inside ring of each tray, and then the wine is available on the outer rings. Um, a bowl for your cups, and then return to your seats down the side aisle. So please come. Cease to worship you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roll at the sun.
apologies if you didn't get any wine uh, or grape juice. You can see me after the service and we can uh, fill that gap, I guess. Um, the body of Christ has been given for you and the blood of Christ has been shed for you. And so now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world as you do. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Sing and honor, glory and power be to the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne in worship. presence here this morning. It is good to worship together, so we are blessed to be able to gather again this week. And God bless you as, as you go forth into the world, back to your uh, jobs and, and whatever is ahead this week. So God bless you. Go in God's peace, and you are the body of Christ. say love is just a word, just four letters in a row, just a thing that people say, or they never tell you so, and you've used every excuse to let nobody in, now this cloud you bring around has become your only friend. Everybody's saying that it's gonna go away, but it don't go. And everybody's telling you one day it's gonna change, but you don't know if it's really gonna end. But there is a way, there is a spark, there is a hope that you can hold on to. There is a lifeline come to the rescue, just like a hand that's waiting for you. And if you believe in this, he promises you won't be alone. There is a way, 
the truth and the light and the way. What if love became a man? If the word had flesh and bone, would you recognize his face? If he came to bring you home, you think you're all alone, gotta do it on your own, ride it solo. Someone you can call when you stumble and fall Cause you don't know if you'll be getting up again But, but there, there is, is a way, there is a spark There is a hope that you can hold on to There is a lifeline come to the rescue Just like a heart that's, that's waiting for you. you And if, if you believe in this, I promise you won't be alone There is a way, the truth and the light Don't you think your life's worth saving? Don't you know that love's amazing? Don't you want to lay your troubles, troubles down? Lay them down. If I thought love was just a word, I might feel the same way too. But it's so much more than that. And it's waiting here for you. There is a way. There is a spot. There is a hope that you can hold on to. There is a lifeline come to the rescue. Just like a hand that's, that's waiting for you. And if you believe in this, he promise you won't be alone. There is a way. There is a way. There is a way to